Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode here at Sobriety University. On this channel, we talk about addiction and recovery related topics. My name is Joel and in this video, we're going to be talking about how to get through your first 30 days clean from marijuana. So this topic came from Maria, big shout out. I think she's on like seven days clean now. So huge congrats, put a congrats down in the comments. And essentially, as I've talked about on this channel before, the first 30 days is the most important. It's what builds momentum and helps one realize that, yeah, I can actually do it. Also, for me personally, after 30 days, like it was enough time that I was away from the addiction where I started to feel some benefits and it was enough time where I'm like, that actually took a while. <laughs> so I don't wanna go back and have to redo that. So that was a big motivator right there. So the four things we're gonna talk about today is riding the momentum, meditation, exercise, and journaling slash swishing mindset. So before we begin, like, comment, subscribe, and let's begin. So number one is gonna be riding the momentum. So this is something I've noticed a lot uh, from you guys who have been commenting. Big thanks, by the way. It's been awesome to see your clean time. And there's a lot of hype. It's like three days sober, let's go. Seven days sober, hell yeah. 40 days, you name it. And that excitement and momentum is definitely something that's really strong when one's finally ready to quit. I experienced that as well. I was like, let's go, let's do this. And so the first tip is to be, just ride it out, man. Like feel that energy, feel that momentum. Uh, it might not last forever because life kind of comes back into equilibrium. However, in that first amount of time that one's feeling that intense excitement and passion and motivation i just say ride it out man let it let it carry you as far as it can possibly take you uh, the next few tips here are going to be for when that momentum starts to to die a bit and so the next one is going to be exercise now i recently made a video on the importance of exercise and getting clean uh, that's going to be linked down below in the description box or whatever and i think exercise this of course is going to be in tandem with riding the momentum Exercise is huge though. First off, I need to get a natural high. It's important that there's something that's kind of bringing uh, a sense of like excitement and endorphin release. Uh, exercise is a great way to do that. Second, it starts building discipline, which is key for getting clean from any addiction uh, and just a great skill to have in general for like you know, work, for, for relationships. Discipline is huge. And a, a lot of people, I'm, well, I guess I can only speak for myself, I did not have a lot of discipline when I was using, hence why I used so much, because I didn't want to take accountability, et cetera. And going to the gym started to help build that muscle and create that accountability. Three, it just starts to build like healthier self-esteem, like, wow, like I'm, I'm looking good today, or uh, I, I've lost some weight, et cetera. And that creates momentum in itself, and in turn can help one stay focused. I know it did for me. I'm like, okay, well, I'm making gains in all these other areas too. Uh, I'm pretty sure I don't want to screw that up by going back and relapsing and having to, to lose all this progress here. I want to keep this train going and, and who knows where I'll be in four or five years, two years, even three years, uh, and how much better my life will be from doing all these things. Uh, now moving into the next one is going to be meditation. So meditation has been probably one of the most important things that has helped me get sober. It's, I started it about a week before getting clean and I really think it had a big impact and kind of pushing things forward and making me finally realize, okay, this is something I want to overcome and get rid of for good. And so for me, meditation looks like sitting for about 20 minutes. Uh, I do eyes open. Uh, for the first few years though, I did eyes closed. I found doing eyes open helped me connect with the world a little better because it was like when I was doing eyes closed, I could totally like get in a Zen place. But when I was like driving down the highway and I was getting annoyed with someone, I can't just close my eyes and <laughs> go into that Zen place. So I had to learn how to find that Zen with my eyes open and being a part of the world essentially. And so what meditation did was it helped me start to recognize my thoughts a little more. It helped me start reacting less and noticing when that compulsion would come up to do something. Even simple as like getting up. That's, that's like a sometimes an unconscious reaction. And bringing all that into light, before it would be like, okay, a thought would come up hey, you should go smoke some weed. And before I thought that was like who I was. I thought that was like me in a sense. And this might sound a little esoteric for someone that has never done this before, but essentially that thought is not me. It's, it's a separate thing. And I was like, oh, there's the mind creating that thought. Let's go smoke weed again. I don't have to listen to it. I can just let it. And this is the analogy that comes along a lot in the beginning of meditation for my like classes and stuff. It's just like a cloud in the sky, right? It's just, I'm gonna let that cloud go by like a rain cloud or whatever. 
and then it's just gone and it's disappeared. And the, the trick is to be able to, to be able to learn how to do that kind of just on the fly, like, okay, there's a thought, boom, I'm just gonna watch it and not get sucked into it. That, it's difficult, I, I'm not gonna lie, but in, in practicing meditation, it really helps start to strengthen that. And now, how many years later that I've been clean, it's, uh, it's definitely yielded so many benefits. <laughs> it's helped me, probably saved me from a lot of trouble, just from wanting to react or uh, get angry or whatever. And now I can just kind of just be like, oh, there's that impulse to do something again. And so back to marijuana and getting clean for your first 30 days, when that urge does come to like want to go smoke or like maybe, maybe even the thoughts like, hey, you did really good today. You deserve to go smoke some weed. It's like, okay, I can start to recognize that that's kind of a trick thought too. That's just like another cloud passing by and I don't have to grab the bait. I don't have to get hooked onto it. And then I can go to what I actually want to do, which is like, again, go to the gym, exercise, etc. cetera, um, go eat a healthy meal, you name it. Now, speaking of healthy meals, I'm gonna throw this one in as a bonus, is changing the diet. Food has definitely been a huge role in my recovery because I ate pretty shitty when I was using uh, fast food all the time, etc., sugar, junk food, and it definitely played a toll on the mental health and created like a negative spiral. Uh, because I didn't feel good, because I was low energy, because of all the crap food I was eating, I would feel more depressed, and because I felt more depressed, I wanted to go smoke weed, so I wouldn't feel depressed, and then of course I'd feel depressed, because you, you can get the picture here. And so starting to change the diet, eating more greens, eating more whole organic food, it really helps start to shift all that gunk energy in my body it helped start to shift my mindset and help it helped elevate my mood which in turn helped me i would just think clearer helped me want to go continue down this path of healing and recovery and it gave me so much more motivation to, to do all the things that i knew in my heart that i, I needed to be doing to, to have long-term success in this however this was definitely a kickstart to get going and help kind of get rid of those those um, old habits of like laziness, procrastination, etc. I was like, I'm going full send here. I'm gonna ride the momentum like number one. So the last one here is gonna be journaling and sh switching the mindset. So really, and this is something I invite you to do, is kind of be writing down and ask yourself the question, how has marijuana really benefited my life? Uh, in today's day and age, not maybe in the past, because in the past, like marijuana was a huge benefit for me. It definitely helped me, uh, it helped lessen my ego a bit. It helped start connect with people on a different level. However, towards the end of my using days, it was not benefiting. It was not creating those initial results. And so journaling and saying, hey, how is this actually helping me? And I'm guessing the answer is gonna, there's not gonna be a lot to write down. Uh, and then I want also want you to write down, how is this hurting me? And in writing that, I think that's gonna be a real eye-opener and start to help switch that mindset of, okay, this is not something that is actually yielding benefits in my life anymore. Uh, even though I might be wanting it, like I might still feel that pull to use it, kind of like an old ex or something, maybe like a, an ex-lover that like, you know, they're totally unhealthy for you, but you know, they're hot and you wanna hook up with them once in a while. But deep down in your heart, you know that I gotta let them go because it's just causing chaos, we fight all the time, etc. Think about that with marijuana. Like Mary Jane and I had a deep relationship and now we're fighting all the time. You know, I feel depressed every time I hang out with her and it's time to let her go. And in be beginning to do that, it's gonna help start to switch those gears in the mind. It's gonna start to rewire some of those circuits and start sending new signals to the, to the, to the soul and to the body and the heart that, okay, it's time to, to choose a new path. Also, another thing that really helped with journaling was gratitude at the end of the night. So this is something that has been a lifelong practice for sure. Uh, I still do it, I still have to practice it, and that's writing down things I'm grateful for. And I do it right before I go to bed, so it's like the last thing I think about. And I wake up feeling a lot better. And it, it's almost like when I go to sleep, it's like, it, it potentially like seeps into my dreams. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, but it kind of helps me sleep at night. And so things I'm grateful for, friends, family, a job, etc. being clean, being sober, if I'm in a new path, being on a new path, etc. cetera. Um, and it just helps me see how many great things are going on in my life. Another thing too uh, that was, has been really helpful is saying three character assets. So this is something that's talked about in the recovery community a bit and character assets, character defects, writing down three things about myself that I really like that are positives that bring joy and value to other people. 
Uh, and writing those helps me kind of say, especially on a day when I feel like kind of crappy, you know, like, wow, I, like I kind of suck today, that kind of thing. It's like, all right, maybe I didn't perform the best. However, there's a lot of things that I did do well and that are going for me and that I do have to offer. And that just instantly, even saying this right now, I feel like a little better. Like it's like easier to, it, I smile because it's like, yeah, damn right. I am doing a, a lot of positive things in this world. And, I have a lot of value to offer. It just shifts so much emotionally, mentally, mentally, physically, spiritually. It's just a shift and it's something that I super recommend doing. So guys, that's going to end the video today. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll talk to you soon.